7 for our gathering him gather your children Good morning, dear friends. We're so glad to greet you and welcome you to this Sunday service. And we are always delighted to greet our guests. We are always happy that you have joined us, and we always invite you to come and share with us again. And we know that for those who have joined us online, we are delighted also that you are with us, and we hope that you uh, have a beautiful week this next week. As you know, this is our moment for bits and pieces, and so I'd encourage you to uh, get those out right now. Uh, and as you do so, Ruth has an announcement. just want to remind everybody about the tag sale. Um, we haven't done it for a couple years because of the pandemic, but we have this big yard sale. It's in the church at the back, um, and it's to support the kids that go to camp. Um, it's going to be August 31st through September 3rd. That's a Wednesday through a Saturday. Um, so we'd like you to start thinking about, do you have stuff you could donate that would be helpful to the sale? Um, we don't want old paint, no computers, no TVs, no mattresses, um, and not ex uh, ex what do you call it? Uh, exercise equipment, um, because we can't sell those very well. Okay, um, So look to think if you could help us the week ahead when we set up, and then we need people to sign up for sale during the time. But it's a little early to worry about that, but just be looking around your house if you've got stuff you don't really um, want or need. Okay, thank you. Tiffany? Good morning. Uh, 
Miss Kennedy, uh, who's not with me today, she's at a sleepover, but um, she is going to be eight this summer, and she's going to be baptized here on August 6th at two o'clock, so we just wanted to invite the congregation to join us. Also, I'd like to bring your attention to the front of the bits and pieces. Next Sunday, after the church worship, we, uh, Kathleen will be taking pictures for you all to make sure that there is a picture with a name. We have a lot of names in our directory, but we don't have a picture. We'd love to have your picture in the directory. And so uh, it'll be right after church in the community room. And um, for those of you who would like an updated picture, some of the children have gotten a lot older since the picture was in there, the directory, in the directory. So anyone who would like to have their picture taken, just go to the community service. And I think it's till 1230, till whatever, okay. Anyway, uh, but we'd really like to have your picture in the directory. I have a thank you so much card. Dear Colonial Hills, thank you so much for my graduation card and generous Amazon gift card. I plan to attend Thrive which is Transformation Health Responsibility Vocation and Education Program at the University of Central Missouri in the fall of 2023. And I'm excited to live on my own and on a college campus. I know that your gift will come in handy when I live independently, and I am so grateful to have such a loving and supportive church family. Sincerely, Sam Laws. Also, for the preschool and elementary youth, You'll, they, you will be singing for the July 31st service, and so during the Sunday school hour on the 31st, you will be practicing and with Wendy. So we hope that all of your uh, youth and elementary will, preschool and elementary will be there. As you take a moment to look at this week's prayer list, and as you know, many of those are familiar to us and we know, know them. There are also those who aren't. And there are also, as I've said so many times, there are those that are in need of our prayers, but their names are not on our lists. And we ask that there are so many things to pray for now in our world and we ask that you hold up all of those in your prayers as Jim gives the healing prayer. Tell Kathleen, there's a few of us that need some backdated pictures. <laughs> Forty years ago, I looked a little better than I do now. <laughs> uh, I'm going to ask you to bow your heads in a minute or two and to offer a prayer of healing. I would like for you to do this. If there's anybody special in that list that you want to remember, please please say a quick prayer for them. I'll hesitate just a little bit before I begin my prayer to the Lord. Okay, let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we're deeply grateful for the many, many blessings you've given us. We ask that you uphold this, your congregation, at Colonial Hills and protect them and watch over their many needs and be with those that are mentioned in the bulletin today. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you 
remember those that have had some type of operation or procedure and are in the process of healing. Help the healing to be quick and permanent for them. And those, Heavenly Father, that are looking toward an operation or a procedure, we ask that you might fill them with love and let them know how much you care for them and be with the doctors as they uh, have performed the procedure and that their minds and bodies might be at their sharpest point, that the operation might be a complete success. And Heavenly Father, we are concerned about the expanding COVID that's going on right now. And we would ask that you be with the many people who are suffering from that and exposed to that. And we ask that uh, you might protect us from the COVID that is happening right now. Please uh, watch after us. There are many things that we're trying to do to protect ourselves from it with the masks and the shots and those type of things. And we, we know, Lord, how much you ask us to care for each other and love each other. And I know it's a smaller thing, but when we are able to smile at each other, it is an expression of our love for one another. And certainly we do love all our members of our congregation. So please protect us and help get rid of this COVID that we will no longer be necessary to wear masks and each of us can see each other as we share in our smiles and our love for one another. Thank you for the many blessings you've given us. Please continue to watch after us and we are deeply grateful for thy, your healing ministry. We pray in your son's name. Amen. Good morning. A little housekeeping at first. You are going to see a bulletin that I printed off. It has my X marks on it, some names written in there. You probably can't read it because I wrote it. Um, our bulletins are currently sitting at the Mission Center. So thank you to Paul, Dana, and, and everyone that helped get us through um, our emergency printing procedures. And so if you do have a copy, and look at all these little X marks, that's just my notations to myself. Um, I welcome you here this morning in the name of our Heavenly Father and in the name of Jesus Christ. And we come here humbled, yet excited to worship with our Colonial Hills family. I want to thank Kathleen, Jim, Wendy, Paul, and his bulletin expertise, Christy and Kara, Kathleen, Barb, Nate, and Wally, and Dale for um, uh, helping us out this morning. Um, our speaker today I didn't anticipate that. If you do know her, I really don't need to introduce her. But um, when we were working at home, and she's on a, I'm not sure if it was a review or a call with her boss's boss, um, I overheard her tell her that she's one of the two most valuable employees in their group because she reaches out to people and interacts with them and makes sure that uh, they are included and that she cares about them and does that to other parts of the organization that she works in. And that's who she is. Dana is a passionate, caring, and she does things that continually improve herself. Um, you'll see her reading, looking at videos, either in her work, for projects around the house, or in her spiritual development. In 16 days, it will be the 30 year anniversary of our first date. 
And at that time, I was 29, so you can do a quick math where I'm at in the age thing. And uh, I was not a good boyfriend the first month that we dated. Actually, I never asked her to be my girlfriend, so we skipped some stages in there. But I'm very thankful to Barb Garwood and Gretchen Bowes for continually plugging the good word in for me in that first month. Um, after Labor Day trip back to Ohio and um, three phone calls of begging, I got her back, and this is where we're at today. So, um, I know in my life, she has done all those things about rebuilding and caring about people. So we look forward to uh, her ministry today. I know she has prepared very hard. She's taken a scripture theme that I wouldn't touch, uh, but she has done that, and we look forward to her, her ministry today. If you'll follow with me uh, in our scripture reading for this morning's service from Psalms 52, 8b and 9. I trust in God's unfailing love forever and ever. For what you have done, I will always praise you in the presence of your faithful people. And I will hope in your name, for your name is good. Will you stand with us as we uh, sing the opening hymn, hymn 108, now sing to our God. Good morning, Spirit. With grateful hearts, we have gathered to receive, experience, and to share your love. Thank you that your blessings now pour upon each one. Assist us to calm our minds, focus our attention, and to take in the gifts of music, prayer, and spoken word. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Humble yourselves and continue in prayer. Cry to God when you are in your fields, over all your flocks. Cry to God in your houses, over all your household, both morning, midday, and evening. Cry to God against the power of your enemies. Cry to God against the devil who is an enemy to all righteousness. Cry to God over the crops of your fields that you may prosper in them. Cry over the flocks of your fields that they may increase. But this is not all. You must pour out your souls in your closets and your secret places and in your wilderness. And when you do not cry to the Lord, let your hearts be full, drawn out in prayer to God continually for your welfare and also for the welfare of those who are around you. Do not suppose that this is all, for after you have done all these things, if you turn away the needy and the naked and visit not the sick and afflicted and impart of your substance to those who stand in need, if you do not do any of these things, your prayer is in vain and avails you nothing. And you are as hypocrites who deny the faith. During the disciples' generous response, we focus on aligning our heart with God's heart. Our offerings are more than meetings of budget or funding mission. Though through our offerings, we're able to tangibly express our gratitude to God, who is the giver of all. As we share our mission tithes, either by placing money in the plates or through e-tithing, use this time to thank God for the many gifts received in life. Our hearts grow aligned with God's when we gratefully receive, faithfully respond by living Christ's mission. Would you bow with me? Gracious God, giver of all that is good, we humble ourselves before thy throne of grace, recognizing that you are the true giver of all that is good and glorious that your love and compassion shown through the gift of your son sustains us and gives us hope. It is in that hope that we, we ask that you will help us align our hearts with yours, that our tithings both of monetary and of time and of giftedness may be used to build your kingdom, to bless your children, and to glorify your holy name. Open our eyes, Lord, to the needs of your children each day. Break our hearts for those things that break your heart. And give us the courage to reach out in faith, and love and compassion to bless a world in need to bless a world that so so is in need of healing and of your light and your truth thank you for this time to gather together may our voices be raised in praise And may we bring honor and glory to thee. In the name of your Son, we pray. Amen.
Good morning. Our scripture today comes from the Holy Bible New Living Translation, Luke 30, 10, 38 through 42. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed her into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening as he taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, My dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There's only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken from her. Good morning. morning. Kara and Christy, thank you so much for that beautiful song. Um, When we talked with Christy about um, doing Ministry of Music, um, she said, what do you want me to do? And I'm like, anything about like God's love, I'm sure you'll pick out the perfect song. And that was beautiful. Thank you. Whoops. Okay. There is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. Hamlet by William Shakespeare. This is one of my favorite quotes, and it really applies to my perspective on the story of Martha and Mary. When I first hear the story, My initial inclination is to judge Martha and label her as bad. After all, Jesus reprimands her for being too focused on the doing and not having her priorities in the correct order, which is obviously bad, right? I want to separate myself from identifying too closely with Martha, the doer, and align myself with the heart of Mary, the one being in Jesus' presence. Okay. It is natural for our ego self to pick sides, Mary versus Martha. And in picking sides, we separate ourselves from God and each other. It's the ego's way of telling us we can do it on our own, and then suffering occurs. How often do we pick sides in our daily life? Did you follow the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp trial? Did you pick a side? I know I did. What about your favorite sports team? In our house, Ohio State Buckeyes are good, and the other team is bad. And we won't even mention that name. But what about more controversial topics? I won't mention them, but you know what they are. Do you pick a side? We pick sides all day long, labeling our side as good and the competition as bad. But what if there is more to Martha than meets the eye? Okay. As I prepared for today, I thought it would be interesting to try to see this story from Jesus' perspective. How would Jesus relay this story? And here is what I came up with as a possibility a story told from Jesus' point of view. After many travels and a short stay in Jericho, the disciples and I began the long walk to Jerusalem for the annual Passover feast. 
Deep down, I knew my time on earth was nearing its end, and I wanted to spend as many precious moments as I could at Bethany, at Martha's house, with her, Mary, and Lazarus. As happened many times before, Martha graciously welcomed us into her home. She made us feel so welcomed. Hospitality and serving were two of her greatest spiritual gifts, and she performed them with ease. As we visited, I began sharing the last teachings I would give in this setting with the friends I loved most dearly. A short time later, several more followers arrived, and Martha's countenance began to change. I think the sheer number of us was unexpected to her, and I could tell she was becoming worried that her typical preparations would not be enough. She quickly retreated to the kitchen while Mary remained poised at my feet, attentive to every word. One of the things I loved so much about this family was their love, devotion, faith, and ability to understand and connect with the Word of God. I felt such a connection with each one of them. They had a level, level of understanding that many, including my 12 chosen disciples, did not gain until I showed myself to them after the resurrection and opened their minds so they could understand the scripture. Just a short while earlier, the sisters had sent word to me that their brother Lazarus was sick. I remember clearly the messenger telling me, Lord, the one you love is sick. I waited two more days before returning to their home in Bethany so the glory of the Lord would be revealed. As I neared the town, it was Martha who came running to me confirming that her brother had died. Her faith, however, was great. She emphatically claimed, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know even now, God will give you whatever you ask. That's the way it always was with Martha, always coming to me first with her problems, full of faith that I would be there to help in her time of need. So it was totally in character when Martha interrupted my teaching to insist I tell Mary to help her with the preparations. I laugh when I reflect on the meaning of her name, for Martha means lady boss. Very fitting for this well-organized, sensible lady of the house and pillar of the community. Oh, Martha, Martha, I understood her heart and deep gratitude for me for all the blessings she had received in her life. She wanted to generously express it in ways that were meaningful for her, but my time was short. We didn't need a big meal with all the fancy preparations. A simple meal would suffice. I had so many things I wanted to share with my most beloved friends before I departed. As I read all the stories in the Bible about Martha and learn more about her and try to see things from all sides, my view of Martha has changed. That desire for separating from her falls away and feelings of connectedness take its place. Thoughts I had that identified Martha as bad and selfishly caught up in worldly concerns turned to admiration for a woman using her God-given gifts to express love for her dearest friend in ways that were true to her authentic self. And I ask myself, how can I use my spiritual gifts to love others and end suffering? Thoughts of Martha being a woman who dared approach Jesus 
with such a blaming accusatory tone turn to respect for a woman who came to Jesus first with her problems instead of complaining behind another's back. And I ask myself, how often do I create separation and suffering by complaining to others and don't go to Jesus first for help? Just a second. I practiced this and really was trying not to cry. Okay, have you ever looked at a situation through a different lens and found your whole outlook on life changed? A story from the Buddhist tradition goes like this. It's called Rainy Day, Sunny Day. There was once an old lady who cried all the time. Her elder daughter was married to an umbrella merchant while the younger daughter was the wife of a noodle vendor. On sunny days, she worried, oh no, the weather is so nice and sunny, no one is going to buy any umbrellas. What will happen if the shop has to close? These worries made her sad. She just could not help but cry. And when it rained, she would cry for her younger daughter. She thought, oh no, my younger daughter is married to a noodle vendor. You cannot dry noodles without the sun. Now there will be no noodles to sell. What should we do? As a result, the old lady lived in sorrow every day. Whether sunny or rainy, she grieved for one of her daughters. Her neighbors could not console her and jokingly called her the crying lady. One day she met a monk. He was very curious as to why she was always crying. She explained the problem to him. The monk smiled kindly and said, Madam, you need not worry. I will show you a way to happiness and you will need to grieve no more. The crying lady was very excited. She immediately asked the monk to show her what to do. The master replied, it is very simple. You just need to change your perspective. On sunny days, do not think of your elder daughter not being able to sell umbrellas, but the younger daughter being able to dry her noodles. With such good, strong sunlight, she must be able to make plenty of noodles, and her business must be very good. When it rains, think about the umbrella store of the elder daughter. With the rain, everyone must be buying umbrellas. She will sell a lot of umbrellas, and her store will prosper. The old lady saw the light. She followed the monk's instruction. And after a while, she did not cry anymore. Instead, she was smiling every day. And from that day on, she was known as the smiling lady. Life is all about perspective. For the old lady, nothing really changed. There were still sunny days and rainy days. What changed was her perspective. And that made all the difference. What or who do you label in your life as good or bad? How might you look at it in a different way that might free you from your suffering and separation? Is it possible to remove all judgment and view things as neither good nor bad? This next story is called The Farmer's Fortune. Listen for the differences between the responses from the neighbor and the old farmer. 
Once upon a time, there was an old farmer who had worked his crops for many years. One day, his horse ran away. Upon hearing the news, his neighbors came to visit. Such bad luck, they said sympathetically. Perhaps, the farmer replied. The next morning, the horse returned, bringing with it three other wild horses. What great luck, the neighbors exclaimed. Perhaps, replied the old man. The following day, his son tried to ride one of the untamed horses, was thrown, and broke his leg. The neighbors again came to offer their sympathy on his misfortune. Perhaps, answered the farmer. The day after, military officials came to the valley to draft young men into the army. Seeing that the son's leg was broken, they passed him by. The neighbors congratulated the farmer on how well things had turned out. Perhaps, said the farmer. The farmer took an equal view of life and recognized fortune and misfortune follow one another. He did not judge as good or bad, and his suffering was lessened. There are other lessons to be learned from our scripture in Luke 10, but the final message I want to share with you is the importance of being present in relationships as we spend time with one another. Jesus was present with Martha as he listened to her concerns. He wasn't distracted by his phone or the TV or his own thoughts of the impending crucifixion. He wasn't formulating his own response to her complaint, and Martha felt heard. In that moment of loving interchange between two friends, I can only guess a miracle happened within Martha. The woman who had been in Jesus' presence and then separated, pulled away, and distracted by many things, was drawn back into the present moment, finding peace in the presence of Jesus. My challenge for you today is to work at being truly present with people and seeking first to understand. In that process, we may just find our view of the world changes and experience a peace that passes all understanding. Amen.
as part of our sending forth, will you follow and read with me our mission prayer? God, where will your spirit lead today? Help me be fully awake and ready to respond. Grant me courage to risk something new and become a blessing of your love and peace. Amen. Thank you.